Hi, I'm Alex Nodgrass, and this is The Bandsaw Life. This is called a blade stabilizer. and This is strictly for quarter inch or less. I've been with Carter for 16 years. I've been working with bandsaws for 22. Everything that I've just told you wasn't something that is in a book. Matter of fact, any book you pick up will tell you put the blade in the center. Any book will tell you make sure everything's coplanar. This is my own personal experience. You'll notice I do not have to take the table off on this unit because there are no guides underneath the table to adjust. If you've got guides like this, just back them away. This is a specific guide that is for quarter inch or smaller. Okay, It is set up so that, number one, make sure we've got it unplugged. Number two, we're going to adjust that blade so that the deepest part of the gullet is where? Center of the wheel. Take the stabilizer, drop it right into place. Bring it up against the back edge, and I think we can see this on there. And you want to push the blade forward one eighth of an inch. Spring load that blade. Tighten it. Notice the blade comes way forward when I roll the wheel because I've pushed it forward here. So we're going to use our thrust adjustment to bring it back so that the deepest part of the gullet is back in the center of the wheel. That way the blade is sprung into the groove. How many of you have tried to cut into something and back out only to have the blade pop off the saw? This eliminates that. How many of you would like to be able to get perfect straight up and down cuts when you do bandsaw boxes? This takes care of that. How many of you would like to be able to turn within half the distance that you would normally turn with any blade? We don't have side guides, so now the blade can flex. But here's the best part. When you cut on a bandsaw, it, most of the time you kind of feel like it's hard to make the turn. That's because with a guide like this, the back edge can pivot and move and slide. So that means the center of pivot is constantly changing on the blade, making it very tough to follow a line. Now the back edge is in a groove. It can't move. Poet didn't know it. Okay. Now the center pivot never changes, so that means it makes it much easier to follow a line and cut. We want to make sure that our table is level, which I can tell you right now, it's not even close. We're dead on. Here we go. What I'm doing here is a simple three-dimensional cut. All right, now we're able to back out, like I said, since we sprung load that blade into the groove. Now I was, where I was at, I believe, was anytime that you do something three-dimensional, you want to do the front view, then the side view. If you're doing four-dimensional, front view, side view, then top view. And as you all can see, we have the front view of that reindeer cut out now, okay? Now, we'll take the top off, give it a toss. We, don't, we want to be able to see where to put the horns, the head, the neck, the body, and the legs. Leave the bottom piece on so we've got a flat surface to work with. Now remember I said it's nice to be able to make a nice sharp turn. Now the front edge can flex instead of binding between those two stationary points, ruining the blade. So we get half the distance. Now here's kind of where, think about this, I don't care how good you are on a bandsaw, you will not cut any faster than a blade can track. That being said, we'll do a quick rundown. of our deer, okay? Now our next thing that we're gonna do is our bandsaw box. We'll just use a little of this green wood. Now, if y'all have seen these boxes up there, they're pretty basic, okay? There's not a whole lot to them, but you can't really tell where they're cut in at. You always want to follow the grain. That way the cut line looks like a grain line and people can't really see where you cut in. 
we'll just use a piece of this old green wood here. All we want to do is just kind of trace around it. Now all bandsaw boxes are made pretty much the same. So what we've got here is just the outside design of the box. We'll just follow that right on around. Now, remember I said it's nice to be able to cut perfectly straight up and down? I wasn't kidding, especially in thicker wood in bandsaw boxes. So now we've got the outside design cut. Now, if y'all do not have a quick release on your saw, if you don't have two saws, you're gonna probably want one of these if you start doing bandsaw boxes because you will see how many times I swap from saw to saw to do this one little box. So we've got the outside design cut. We're going to set our fence up to where it's about, oh, maybe a quarter of an inch. And we'll just cut that box off. Now we've cut the back off. We can see that our grain is running in this direction. So we're just going to cut in and around and leave ah, maybe a quarter of an inch all the way around. So now, for the most part, we have already done the full outside of that box, okay? You would glue the back on. Don't worry about this filling it. Actually close it and glue it shut. What that does is it gives you less kerf around the drawer so that the drawer isn't so sloppy in the box, okay? So the outside, like I said, pretty much is done. The last thing we've got to do is our drawer itself. Now you want to cut the front and the back of the drawer off. You can't cheat and just make two passes. You do have to actually cut front and back off. Then the last cut that we've got to do is the inside of the drawer. Now if you look up here you'll notice that some of these boxes they look identical just one smaller than the other. That's because what I've done is I take the last piece and just start over and just slowly make some progressively smaller boxes. Take our drawer. We would glue our drawer back together and now we've got basically a full bandsaw box As you can see, 90% of the work is in finishing it. That's why I don't finish, okay? All right, last thing we're gonna do is this snake. All we did was just switch that little old 1 8 or that 3 16 for a 1 8. We've gotta be able to do some real tight turns here. Now, anytime that you do snake work, flex work, first thing you wanna do is shape the snake in whatever shape that you want. If you want the head to come up like a cobra, then you've gotta have the wood in that shape. Okay. The second thing you have to do is drill the hole because if you cut this key and then try to drill the hole, it's going to crack it almost every time. Right down above our work. And we're going to imagine that I have already drilled the hole. And the only reason I'm using square stock here, okay, is it, it's very simple to get a hold of. You can use round stock. Make sure you plane the bottom so the flat's always on the bottom. And then I usually plane the side just a whisker so I know exactly where 90 is. The only reason I started using square stock is my wife, bless her heart, decided she wanted plant hangers that were square, not round. So the first cut is to make a key, okay? You want to make sure that you lay this out in the order that you cut it. You get it out of order, I'll tell you right now, a day is a terrible thing to waste. They are impossible. If I get them out of order, I throw them away. That's how tough they are to put back together. Now, from here on out, it's the same cut. Remember the four corners of the table, starting with one, two, three, four, in that order. The wood is pointed at one, straight, two, straight, three, straight, four, and out. There's one piece, okay? Rotate the wood one time. Again, with it pointed at one, straight, two, 
straight. Three, straight, four, and out. It's two pieces. Y'all starting to get the hint here? It's the same cut over and over and over. And when it's 22 feet long, trust me, my neighbors thought I was some sort of a weirdo with a bandsaw in the front yard because when you do a 22 foot snake, you need 44 feet of swing. And my shop does not have 44 foot of swing. We'll just do one more cut and put it back together for you here. And all we're doing is just sliding everything back together the exact way that we cut it. And just like that, instead of having a solid piece of wood, we now have flexible wood. Okay? Make sure that your tables are good and waxed. Sand them down and wax them. I, I like to use a boat wax or Johnson's paste wax. Remember, a bandsaw pulls everything down to the table, so if it's smooth, it makes it much easier to make your turns and, and twists. Thank you all very much for your time. I hope that you enjoyed it.